Hey, what's up, fellas? This is Dr. Varun Gandhi, and thank you for tuning in to the Gandhi TV. This is your one-stop shop to elevate your consciousness. Hmm. So recently I've been toying with this idea that we have power over how we see our reality. From, what, from this, what I understood is that there are two separate things going on in this world. One is that there is an objective reality, as in the situation or the circumstances playing out how it is, just as it is. And then there's a subjective experience that you and I bring to the table. And when we step in to an objective reality, we make meaning out of it. Woo! That's deep. So here's what this means. Let's say we're in an office situation and it's between you and a coworker, and let's call him Tom. There's always been beef between you guys. For some reason, you've always had something against each other to the point where now you guys don't talk as much with each other and you don't communicate in the office. So there's one day Tom walks into your office without knocking, but he doesn't barge in. He kind of slowly tiptoes. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want you to notice, but he doesn't want you to get disturbed, right? So he kind of tiptoes in, leaves an envelope on the table and just starts walking out. In that moment, that was the objective reality of what happened. In that moment, you see him out of the corner of your eye you stop him and you get angry at him and you curse at him and you berate him. So your subjective experience came in and told you that this person annoys you, that this person is out there to get you. So I need to get back at him every chance I get. So you get angry at him and you let it out. So it was an objective reality where this was the part that you didn't know. So why was Tom there in your office? Why was he there? Well, this past weekend, he had gone to this seminar and he had listened to this talk that told him to forgive things, just forgive people. So you, you can become a better person to let things go. So he took that lesson and he wanted to implement that with you. So he was there in this office to drop off a letter in this manila envelope asking for forgiveness and asking and requesting for some time to talk with you about these issues and have a heart to heart conversation. So you didn't know all of this, but your subjective experience came in, your memory from the past came in and said, oh, Tom, yesterday he did something like this. Today he's going to do it again. And here he is, voila, he's here doing the same thing that he did yesterday. Annoying me, I have to get angry at him. Let me do it now. Now is an opportunity and you take it. Now imagine a different scenario where instead of Tom, a colleague, Sarah, where you, who you're neutral to, it's not like you love her or you're best friends with her but you don't have beef with her like you did with Tom. So Sarah walks in and there's the same manila envelope. She hands it over to you and she says, hey, I got to run. I got to go for a meeting, but I was asked to drop this off to you. You smile at her. Thank you. You nod. Thank you. Thank you. Right now you open it and you see a pink slip. So she was the bearer of bad news, whereas Tom was the was the light bringer, right? He was a light worker and coming there to, to have this conversation with you. 
He just found his light and he was there to share it with you. And you got angry at him. But when Sarah walks in as the bearer of bad news, you accept it smilingly and thank it. You're grateful for it. So that's our subjective experience, bringing in memories from our past and painting a picture in our consciousness. So now what happens in, in the subjective experience? So objective reality is the situation is as it is, right? It is as it is. That's the situation, the circumstance. But the subjective experience us, what's in our consciousness, the contents of our consciousness. Now that can be different, that can be changed, that can be what, it, what we want it to be. But we don't know this yet. Right now, the contents of our consciousness has been cluttered with a lot of shit from our past. Has been cluttered with a lot of negative messages that's been given out by society, has been cluttered with a lot of anger, shame, guilt, betrayal from your past, has been cluttered with a lot of negative habits, with weight, overweight, alcohol abuse, cigarette abuse, been cluttered by all of these distractions and our subjective experience comes in and says yes this is a good distraction there are all of these issues going on but I want to take all of these distractions right now I don't want to face reality objective reality what I'm telling you is that you have control over how you see things or how you perceive your reality or how you paint the picture. Right now, it's a colorless picture. It's a black and white picture. You come in, your consciousness steps in and it paints that picture, gives it color. You bring in the meaning. So why not make it so that it brings the best out of you. Right now, the meaning that we bring to the table is, has been tainted by our past, has been tainted by the food we eat, by the water we drink, the crappy water or the crappy drinks that we take in, like sodas and alcohol. You have forgotten our roots in diet, We've allowed all of this synthetic, processed crap to come into our diet. And that's polluting us. This polluting the subjective experience and influencing the subjective experience. Because think about this. You know when you eat a donut, and you, when you're chewing it down and you're just, you're enjoying it, oh, subjective experience is like, Oh, I love this donut, mm, it tastes so good. Objective reality is that this is a fried piece of dough with a lot of sugar in it. Glazed with all this and that and the other. Fully loaded. That's objective reality, it's what, like 1500 calories. and 50 grams of sugar. I don't even know if that makes sense, but yeah, that's a lot, hopefully. A lot of sugar. But subjective experience says, mm, this tastes so good. <laughs> right? So we've taken a bad, quote unquote, unhealthy, let's call it unhealthy habit, or unhealthy processed food, made it into a habit, 
And now we are relying on that habit to fulfill our pleasures. But later on, you'll realize, you know, six hours later, you'll realize, oh, my tummy hurts. Why does my tummy hurt? You have all these health issues later in life because of that donut, because of your donut eating habit. You know, one donut here and there is just fine. I ain't complaining about that. I do that. I have chocolate chips once a month, so I ain't talking about that. But I'm talking about every day type of eating. Every meal type of eating a donut. Or anything for that matter, you know? Anything unhealthy that's polluting the body, degrading it. Body is a temple, they say. Body is a temple to our soul. So, why aren't we why aren't we treating our bodies like a temple? That's just one level, though, right? That's the physical, the body level. But now think about the mind level. What thoughts are you thinking? Your subjective experience has control over the, your thoughts. It your thoughts occur inside of your consciousness, so you have control. Not control, but you, ha you have power over which thoughts you accept. I'm not saying to push away the thoughts, but the thoughts that you accept or the ones that you attach to are the ones that you hold on and those turn into beliefs. The thoughts that you just watch and let go, you know, like you do during meditation, that's okay. I mean, it's good to understand why those are negative if they are to try to get to the root of it because then you'll continue having negative thoughts so that's one thing but if you don't hold on to it you're just letting it go you're not attached to the negativity but why did that negativity arise that's a different question that you have to also understand later but let's just put it at this the subjective experience has particular tool brushes in its toolkit. You know, it's a painter and it has a particular tool brushes, you know, brushes, tool brushes. It has a particular kind of paint brushes in its toolkit. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Which one does it choose for this mission? So what are the different brushes that you have? Memories are one of them what exists in your past and how you've turned that into a belief. So we have beliefs that are limiting, that create blockages in our mind. And there's energetic blockages that happen in our spiritual body, in our etheric body. We have energy blockages along our chakra lines, up and down our chakras. So we have all of these different, we have these different kinds of blockages and ways that your subjective experience gets colored. Our goal is to understand why is it being colored a particular way and how can we improve it? That's the whole goal of self-improvement, self-realization is the goal. You realize yourself, you understand yourself completely. What are these contents in your consciousness? When you are stepping into a situation, you know there's an objective reality playing out in front of you. But how are you showing up and what does that mean to you? What are you seeing in that situation? What you see in a particular situation, in a particular person, in a particular thing, in a particular experience, what you make meaning out of, there's a part in you that identifies with that. Understand and get to know that part of you that identifies with a particular experience in a particular way. Because if you really think about it, in objective reality, there are infinite number of possible ways to understand any particular reality. 
but the one that you hold on to, the one that you identify out of all of these, let's just say, okay, maybe it's not infinite, but there are a thousand. To you, that's infinite, right? We're picking one out of a thousand. And which one do you pick? That's the one that paints your consciousness. But that also means that you have a part of you inside of you that inside of your consciousness that identifies with that situation in that particular way. And that's why it made that meaning out of that situation. So get to know that side of you. Get to know that part of your consciousness. That's the goal of self-realization. Now, every person that comes to you as a trigger, every person that comes to you as a sign for happiness or, uh, you know, as in, uh, as in, uh, to, bring out, to bring about stir up some negativity, either or, you get to know where you are. The more people that come as love, the more you know you have love in your life. The more people that stir up negativity, you have more negativity in your life. So why do you have more negativity in your life? Now go to the root of these issues. Go deeper, dig deeper. Go back into your past. Think about certain incidences that happened when you were a child between one and seven, eight. I know it's hard, but maybe talk to your parents and you know, get, ask them questions about your childhood to see what incidences happened, what caused you to create certain belief systems and hold on to these. Now that they're playing out unconsciously. You don't even know that they exist, but you're running certain patterns, certain habits that show up in certain ways, subtle ways. The movement of the pen irked you some way. Why? Subtle. It's so subtle sometimes. So in my experience, the reason, I, the reason I understood everything that I just explained to you is, so a couple of years ago, I was in this hard, tough relationship, or I was in a relationship, the best one of my life. It wasn't hard, but the breakup was hard, right? But what had happened was inside of me, I had created a whole subjective experience that was different from ob objective reality. I had created this relationship in my mind and I was living in my mind. And I was living up to that relationship that I created in my mind, in my objective reality. Meaning I had created an image of her in my mind and I was doing everything I could putting all my energy towards her in my mind and that would show up as action in person I'd always be there for her because I created this subjective experience out of a different objective reality I don't know what her experience was of our relationship she may have been seeing things objectively but I had tainted my picture, myself. It was not, not her doing. It was me creating my own, painting my own picture in my own consciousness my way because that's what I needed the most at that time. And I was putting my energy into that day in, day out, every moment of my life for even two years after, she, after we broke up, year and a half. until I suddenly woke up and realized what I was doing. And even then it was hard to get out of the habit, but I had to finally cut it out, like cut off that energy source. Just take a big old chop. And uh, that was all inside of me, right? There was that energy inside of me. I had to essentially remove that entity that, was, that I had created in my mind 
Once that entity was gone, I cut out all the cords that was attached between me and that entity. And that's how I was able to release a lot of energy inside of me. As I let go of these attachments of these false identities that I had created in my own subjective experience. I'm releasing energy because right now at, that, at some point I had put in so much energy into that I was draining my energy because it was going there. Now I cut off that source, that, the, so the supply to that, I cut off that. So all of that stays within me. So now I feel that energy inside of my body the minute I cut off that cord. So as you cut off more cords to your past, you're releasing energy inside of your spiritual body, inside of your physical body, inside of your mental body. You'll gain clarity. You'll gain more energy to do more things. Right now your energies are, are going into just functioning in a lower energetic level. That's why you get tired at one, two o'clock. I used to get that. I used to be that way. But instead of trying to fall asleep, I'd go for a walk and wake myself up. But I'd get tired by two, three o'clock. And I'd go into nature to re-energize myself. So when you start, when you start understanding your life, in a way that you have a subjective experience that is you and everything that goes on inside of you, then there's something outside of you, reality as it is happening. And a lot of the times those don't match up because we bring the meaning, our experiences from the past color the picture that we paint. And in a lot of the times, we have to realize that we're painting a picture that, that looks ugly. It's a black and white image and we don't do much about it. We let it be black and white. We're just sitting there and observing. And we're allowing it to just be black and white. Why do we do that? Why do we not use our imagination or actually apply our imagination to color a picture and paint it a particular way. Paint it so beautifully, this portrait, that it's actually a portrait of your life. You paint it so beautifully that everyone who looks at it will just be mesmerized by its beauty. You don't even have to be there and they'll feel your energy in that picture, in that portrait. But you have to realize that you have the control to paint that picture whichever what way. You have the power of decisions. You're constantly making decisions. You have choices. In your subjective experience, there are an infinite number of, of possibilities. But what we do is we realize that there is only, we only think that there is one the one that we hold on to. The reason we're holding on to those experiences and those meanings for those events in that particular way is because we are so programmed to do that. We're so conditioned to think in that way. Our minds are programmed to think in that way that we run particular patterns and habits that cause us to be and behave a certain way. So a lot of us are programmed to, let's say, you know, if you guys do tea time, so three o'clock we're programmed to drink tea. So automatically, at some point our body will realize, oh, it's three o'clock, let's go make tea. But at, at one, initially in this process, you'll look at the clock, you'll see, oh, it's around three o'clock, let's go make tea. After a while, you're building this habit, so much so that your body just realizes, okay, it's it's around three o'clock, I need some chai right now. Let's go make it. That happens. 
Or when we wake up, we need something to drink, something hot, warm, like coffee or tea, right? Because our body, we, we think our body needs to wake up. Well, what if you just drink warm water? The warmth, or is it the caffeine? Try warm water, see what happens. Hot water. But we're so used to, conditioned to drink a particular drink in the morning that that's all we want now. We don't realize that we have infinite possibilities in that decision. But we are so attached to that chai, to that taste of that particular thing that we have in the morning as for breakfast, that we always want to have that. It's because of the attachment. Yeah, you love it, I understand it, because you're, but you're attached to it. Just like a lot of people, after a hard day of work, they're attached to drinking beer, a cold one, or wine at the end of the day, to relax themselves. Or after a hard day of work, they, they smoke or they get high or whatever to drown out the pain. Because that's what they're used to doing and they've done it for so many years now. And they just sit there numb after work. At work, they're working, they're so focused there. They come home, they're so tired, but they don't want to you know, get into their mind and think about something. Their thoughts, their, uh, you know, their self-realization journey, they don't want to get on it. So they drown out all of these noises and these voices by... Um, you know, subduing their, their egos and just drowning it out and just getting high and living up in a different world, different realm, different dimension. So we have to understand that our subjective reality is what colors our life. And we have control. And we can make choices. We have, always have a choice. You always have a choice whether to drink alcohol or water or orange juice. You have a choice. You decide to drink alcohol. You decided to smoke a cigarette because you wanted to look cool. You had a choice not to do that. But you thought it would be a bad, I want to be a bad boy. I'm going to smoke a cigarette so the girls will love me. Now it became a habit that stuck along with you. And guess what? Maybe, they, maybe or maybe not, there are no girls around you, but your lungs are for sure as hell gone. You have it stuck to you for 20 years, now what are you going to do? But you're so attached to it, you don't want to let go. You don't want to renew yourself, you don't want to recharge yourself, you don't want to become a new person tomorrow. Because that's the only way you can grow, is if you start becoming a new person every day, little by little loving yourself a little more because all of this happens in your subjective experience you control your subjective experience you could start loving yourself and transforming your subjective experience the way you want it molding it molding the contents of your consciousness it's like this it's like imagine facebook your facebook feed to be consciousness your consciousness what or yeah your facebook feed like your profile go down and look at all of your posts imagine facebook to be your consciousness your profile page is your consciousness and all of your posts are the contents of your consciousness and that's a perfect analogy what is contained in this mind body spiritual system What do you have inside of you? What issues do you need to resolve before you can move forward to your best self? Because the contents of your consciousness are stuff from your past. And if you're holding on to your past, then you're bringing in that contents of your consciousness. You're bringing that into your content of your consciousness now, into the now. Into every now moment, you're bringing your past in. Because it exists in your consciousness. Especially the negative ones, because you're feeding it an energy that's draining you. And it's not benefiting your life in any way. In fact, it's affecting you in all the levels. Just because you have something emotional stuck in your system, 
it's affecting your health, your physical health, you're eating unhealthy, you're, you're becoming unhealthy. It's affecting your sleep, it's affecting your spiritual body, it's affecting your physical body, it's affecting your mental body, it's affecting on all levels. These are just different manifestations on different levels. Or actually the same manifestation on a different level. Fat is a manifestation of emotions. Fat is a physical manifestation of the emotions that you're holding on to. That's why it accumulates onto your body. I wish muscle were that, right? Muscle could start accumulating onto the body as we worry more. Fortunately not. But muscle is a healthy part. If you start concentrating on your body, making better choices for your body, your muscles will start showing. your muscles versus fat that you accumulate on your body, the bad fats, saturated fat, all of them, trans fats. So know that you have power over your experience, over your subjective experience. If your spirit and your heart has control over this system over your consciousness then you're painting love is love self-love is essentially the portrait that you're painting you'll see the different ways you're loving yourself in your portrait because your heart is involved but we are so focused on our minds that our mind goes into the past and starts worrying or sorry starts it goes into the past and start thinking all of these negative thoughts that have happened to you in their past. Or it goes into the future and starts worrying about it. Worrying about a future that's not even here, that doesn't even exist. You don't even know if you're going to get there. Because the only thing that exists right now is now, the present. So how are you painting your present? How are you painting every present moment in your consciousness? Are you enjoying it? Are you in joy are you in peace are you in bliss or are you in pain and agony and in uh, suffering in anger in hatred in shame and guilt and betrayal which one are you where are you what part in the spectrum do you lie on how are you painting your subjective experience ask these questions to yourself get to know yourself better guys and girls and everyone else we have to start painting our picture with self-love. We have to start loving ourselves more because when you love yourself more and your consciousness reflects the love that you have for yourself, this world will transform. Just like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in this world. If you want to see peace, you got to be the peace. If you want to see love, you got to be the love. Be the love. Self-love. Love yourself first before you offer it to anyone else. Paint your experience in that way. Paint it with the foundation of love. I'm just going to leave you with that. Paint it with the foundation of love, guys. You have control over your subjective experience and just go ham and paint it with love. All right, people, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in again. This was a wonderful episode. Again, I just went off the cuff. I had a particular idea about the objective reality, subjective experience, and bam, bam, here we go. Getting better and better every day. Yeah. Yeah. This is a new affirmation that I'm saying to myself, by the way. Every day and in every way, I get better and better. I keep repeating this to myself every morning, every evening, every night bed. Just repeat it to yourself for 20 minutes. It's doing wonders. 
Guys, check me out on you know, my social media. You can find me on my website, drvarungandhi.com. And again, please like, subscribe to this YouTube channel. You share this video. I know a lot of people can benefit from these messages. So if you know anyone, please, please, please share it to them if it's going to benefit them. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You guys have a great day and we will catch you again next time. Peace, guys.